everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Grow Your Tutoring Business. I've got a special guest today. It's called Sarah. Now, we've actually met in real life, which is super rare and doesn't really happen much in this world because most of you are only know in a virtual way. So it's great to have you uh, on as a guest, Sarah. We met probably about a month ago now, which seems pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, about a month ago. About a month ago. And so th- this is like, um, oh, we'll get into the ins and outs of who you are and what you do in a second, but you you arrange like a nice little meetup for some tutors that are kind of going to say semi-local to me, but it was only yeah. a 20 minute drive really, but it's from like the Medway area down in Kent. Yeah, I um, tutoring can be quite lo- a lonely job, can't it? And um, yeah. I've been tutoring for about six years, kind of officially, if you like. Mm. Um, and it's just something I've wanted to do for ages, try and get people together. Um, rather than just see people online just so you can you know we can share you know ideas with each other or mm-hmm. we all had similar difficulties and similar things that we wanted to chat about um and everybody runs their business in a slightly different way but we're yeah. coming out with the same kind of goal really of supporting the children and yeah we've done two so um yeah it's been they've both been really successful well, it really helped me one. <laughs> so it, it, right. it really helped me because I'd just come off the back of doing a Kent test mock day and I did a couple of different sessions and the scores were low for about the third year running because it's really hard to find Kent test papers that are not stolen from school or yeah. follow the same timings, which is really important for the children to experience, which is what it's about. It's about the experience and not really the result. However, the result causes anxiety. So the one I have, and I've, I've bought quite a few, so all of the ones that I've tried just seem to be pitched at a high level. So it was really great for me to be able to pick the brains of those who've been doing it longer than me and what resources they use for, the, for that and how they kind of manage the, the stuff that I'd been finding tricky and uh, made a really, well, two really good contacts other than yourself. Um, and one sent me an assessment that they were using, which is pitched at the right level, which has made a massive difference because I'm going to go live on this in a couple of weeks. So I'm going to be able to actually try it for real. Whereas I put, I wouldn't have done it. I would have just kept going on and just trying to explain to the parents that the low scores don't matter, yeah. but they don't believe me. So uh, it was. We'd all said exactly the same, hadn't we? We'd all mm. trialed these papers, which weren't really a true reflection mm. of what the Kent test or the Midway test were. Yeah, so it was. It was good to have that conversation and us to realise actually we all feel the same. Yeah, oh, goodness, some of these scores are really low, but now hopefully, um, you know, good good luck. Hope it works with the new one. It, I'm sure it will. And they're much better. Yeah, but that's the power of getting together and seeing each other because that might not be a conversation that would happen naturally in say like a large group like the grow your tutoring business group on facebook it's not something that we'd really that i'd put out there because it's such a i suppose it's quite a niche thing for kent in that in that sense i know 11 plus goes on all over the all over the country but the kent for for whatever reason do it in their own funny way which is different to everywhere else and so it's been it was really great to have that so anyway sarah welcome it's yeah. amazing to have you as a guest. Now you've got quite a uh, quite an interesting background in the tutoring world. We were just talking off camera about employment, having other tutors on board, as well as things going on at school. So give us a little bit of a a background yeah. on what you're specialising, because that's quite interesting as well. And do your sort of move towards tutoring and what happened for you? Yeah. So I. I... I said I've, I've been tutoring for about six years. It all kind of happened. Um, I've been a teacher for twenty years. I um, was an assistant head teacher at a big school, um, Senko, and then I fell pregnant. And I knew at that stage I wouldn't be able to go back and do the hours that I was doing. Mm. Um, and I didn't feel that I'd be able to be a mum properly and do my job properly. And that didn't mm. sit right with me. So. Me being me, I, I literally, Harry was three months old and I was thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I, I can't just not do anything. Because in my head I thought, oh, I'm not going to go back and I'll just have a bit of time. But that's not how my brain works and I just can't do that. So I went into network marketing. This kind of all leads up to tutoring, really. I sold Osborne books. Mm. And then that built up my confidence, really, I think, with being able to have my own business. Mm. Um, it got me used to being on Facebook trying to sell things because that mm. is a big thing in the tutoring business even though we're not sales people naturally as teachers if you're going to be a successful tutor you've got to sell your services 
is. So I think selling the Osborne book was actually a really positive thing for me and it helped me build up a following on uh, Facebook. And that's where my name came from, Read to Grow, um, from the Osborne book. So that was my kind of read baby books, you're helping them grow and helping them develop. And it kind of all stemmed from there, really. So that was kind of started that in November and then the following June, I thought, well, no, it must have been about April time. I thought, I'm just going to go for it with tutoring. I've kind of dabbled a little bit mm. in my earlier years of teaching uh, when I probably was less tired and felt like I had more time to do things before yeah. family life took over. Um, and yeah, just I put, put a bit of a, on my personal page on Facebook, just said I was going to do a bit of tutoring. And then straight away, I thought, right, well, I'll just have a couple of hours. They field honestly 48 hours people are like oh Sarah we hear your tutoring I you know can you do this and then that quickly went to five hours and at that point I couldn't offer anymore with you know I had a nine-month-old baby a husband that's working full-time mm. and um so I started off with five hours and I just uh some of it was for SEN because it would be quite split actually I did a few SEN hours um children that because I wasn't going back to my school, they were actually students that were from the school I was working at at the time, and a couple of 11 plus students. And then it just really snowballed from there. Mm. So I spent two years just really doing one-to-ones. And then I said to my husband, right, that's it. I'm getting so many calls, so many inquiries. I need to work out how I'm going to scale up the business. Mm. Luckily, really fortunate, we, it, the loft in our house was already converted and we wasn't really using it for anything. And um, so this is now my classroom. Nice. I, um, you know, stripped it out, gave it a paint, got some uh, contacted schools, asked if they were getting rid of tables, chairs, any furniture. Mm. I didn't pay for anything. I got an interactive whiteboard for 50 quid because the school No way. It. Yep. Um, they were upgrading all their stuff. And so I have... All the stuff I've got, I haven't spent thousands of pounds on. It's a spare room in my house. I just put myself out there and said, look, I need tables, I need chairs. And if anybody's got an interactive whiteboard, that would be great. And yeah. So, uh, yeah, interactive whiteboard, 50 quid. Got my husband to put it up, <laughs> up yeah. with me in the loft. Um, and then, yeah, this became my base. And then from there, I was able to scale up quite quickly, really, because I was mm. really having those phone calls. And I had my Facebook page mm. um, and word of mouth. And then I just did one group, um, again, to kind of time restraints. And I was feeling a bit nervous as to why parents might want to go to a group when I'd only offered one-to-one historically. Mm. Um, and for me, that was quite a big mindset to go from one-to-one to groups. Why was I saying that? Because actually I was saying that because I had loads of inquiries and financially it was the right thing. Yeah. But that's not what the parents want to hear. They don't want to hear that it's because I want to make yeah. 20 quid an hour or whatever it was rather than 30 quid an hour. Yeah. Um, so I had to have a real kind of mindset change. And so it did take a while for that to kind of feed out to parents, I suppose. Um, so what was the big thing there? I mean, this is something which I get asked a lot about. I mean, I'm, I'm in the, we're pretty much halfway through the eight week Tutors Who Thrive course. So we yesterday, last night was session five. So yeah, more than halfway through. And it was about selling, which yeah. is interesting because you was talking about having that experience. And I think like a lot of tutors don't have that experience and it feels uncomfortable some of the feelings we were coming out with last night was awkward yeah. i feel pushy it's uncomfortable and all of those kind of things which i'm sure that you would have felt when you was doing yeah. your osborne books originally Definitely. and then i'd say that 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 is something which we don't realize we're selling and actually there's like a there is a process that makes that feel a little bit more comfortable but this, I'd say the mo the biggest question I get asked is like groups is like the golden goose for businesses, yeah. tutoring yeah. businesses. And yeah. even if you're not fully like all in on groups, having an evening where you offer a couple or a couple of evenings a week where you've got some space, you're going to allow groups to grow just makes sense for, from a longevity point of view. How yeah. did you, how did you overcome that I... initial kind of thought? Well, I, I just, 
said that's what I was doing. I had to say to myself, right, that is what I'm going to do. And then once I decided that, I had to, I suppose, work backwards and come up with reasons as to why I thought that was a good yeah. idea. Now I think that's probably a really stupid way of doing it because um, <laughs> it was harder in a way. Whereas now, if I speak to anybody, I say, start off with a group, offer a yeah. group initially. Um, and it was very much, you know, I have children that work one-to-one and it's a long old slog for an hour. They don't want to be... You know, I say, come on, right, let's think of this. We're going to write a letter to, we were going to do, a, we did a letter to a local MP. I did one as a one-to-one, actually, because they're still one of my 11 plus one-to-ones. And one is, and the same lesson in both of the groups that I run. And I was like, right, we've got to think about something in the area that we really want to change. And we spoke about, I said, right, when you go for a walk, what do you look around to think, oh, that doesn't look great. I was trying to get things like loads of litter or you know, dog's nest on the floor or graffiti on the walls and things. And it was really, really hard to get that initial idea out of the child. Whereas in the group, you know, you might have at least one that will put their hand up, they will give an idea, and then it triggers the others. So I've just, I use that now as very much, because some of them are one-to-one, you know, they can't come up with the ideas on their their own. They need somebody else to feed mm. off of. And so I do use that as quite a, a selling point, really. That actually, they learn from each other. They share ideas. We build friendships. We're preparing for secondary school where they might go off and meet uh, people that they're not familiar mm. with. You know, the children mm. come to me. like I'm sure they do too. They all come from different schools. Yeah. You know, yeah. So sometimes I've got a group of eight and I've got children from six different schools. There's a different energy in groups. I, can't, I often can't put a name on it. The, the, but the parents see it. The ones who come to the groups and drop off, they do see and feel this energy. So they come in and yeah. the, m- most of the time, that the first session, they don't bounce in. But once they've no. had been part of the session, they're bouncing out. And now they're bouncing yeah. in and out and they absolutely love it. And the parents can see that. But often the ones who are only focused on one-to-one, like it's just different. It's a different energy. It's, I, you know, well, it's intensive, like- isn't it? It is intensive yeah. support they've done a whole day at school and even yeah. if they don't come to me you know i do one of my one-to-ones is four until five so actually they're more or less coming straight from school so we always say offer them a biscuit and things like that to, to try and perk them up a bit yeah yeah one um, yeah and then the other one is at half past six until half past seven you know they've had it's a long old day yeah they, they've had um and just by being in that group they look happier straight away. My yeah. my kind of experience is they are generally happier, happier in that yeah. group session. And I'd even say that with my, you know, the handwriting groups that I run. Um, so I have four in the group. Um, and they are their children who have got quite specific needs as well. And they work well in a group because, you know, we're doing handwriting and it's an hour session, but it's not all physically handwriting. You know, we'll, we start off with practical tasks mm. and then I set them off and I go around and I work with them one at a time. Mm. It gives them a little bit of time to actually have a bit of a breather. You can mm. see them, you know, they've been writing, they need to stop for a bit. Mm. One of them get up and go for a walk around, you know, he's got ADHD and things, he can't focus for a long time. Mm. But in a one-to-one, I feel that's quite intense mm. because you think, oh, I'm going to have a break. But actually, now we need to get back to it. But when there's others, I feel like they get it's just a bit more relaxing for them. Yeah, it's interesting, yeah. isn't it? I I feel the same. And actually, some of these things is about is what we bring in from school because we see this in our in our you know when we're full time teachers or part yeah. part time teachers or you know class teachers. Children working in small groups, if they're being taken out, they often come back in with, "Oh, we get it now. We've done it." Yeah. You take them a one to one; it's quite intense. They come back usually feeling quite drained. Yeah, and it's a draining experience. Not, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean that there's a bit of re-energizing that needs to happen afterwards. A bit yeah. like if this is a bit different. If you haven't had counselling or kind of that talk therapy before, mm. I have quite a few times. How I feel when I come out is I might feel better in myself, but I'm also drained. You know, I need to go and recharge some way. So often it's go for a walk, go and grab a drink, or you know, there'll be there'll be some element to it. And yet we we see that with our children, they go out to one to ones as well. I mean, a group session, it's just there's just a different vibe to it. And like you say, there's lots of things we see, like whether they're sharing ideas or being able just to 
sit back because the spotlight's not on them so intent so intensively so they're able to just have give themselves natural brain breaks i'm not like children with adhd you know they are going to get out of their chair and walk about isn't it nice to give them a space where that can happen without mm-hmm. thinking about having their card turned or going onto the cloud or those other and things I, and i you know I, the, the work that i do as a self-employed tutor in a local school for national tutoring program as well the same with them i've mm. got a boy that i work with he cannot sit so as soon as he comes in i'll say to him do you want to stand up or sit down today and he's like yeah. stand up and he's all over the place and i think mm. if you then were to send him to tutoring after school and expect him to kind of be one-to-one yeah focused, it's not going to work so just giving them um that opportunity to work in a group i feel has been more beneficial so yeah, if I was to give anyone kind of a tip about groups is to, before you sell the group, know why you're selling the group. Yeah. Because I learned that the hard way. Mm. And although I scaled up then into groups and it was successful, it took me a while to persuade parents to go to a group. Whereas now, nobody asks for one-to-one because I don't offer that one to Yeah. Class. That's so interesting. Like, so one of the big things in the within the course that's coming through, lots of them are going. Yeah, I'd like to. I've been thinking about courses for ages. I don't quite know how to do it. I'm known for one to one. How do I move towards groups? And there's that ripping the the plaster off as quick as you can and going. I'm not doing one to ones anymore. They're not even on offer. And it's a really bold, brave move. But it's one that will pay out because they still want you. They still want you. Yeah, they they do, and. I- you know, it's just to kind of put it in a bit of context for people. When I first went to a group session, so this would be the, I'm just working it out. Uh, the, so I've done four years of group sessions for, for the 11 plus. The first year I started off with just a group of four, uh, one group of four. The second year I went to two groups of six. This year I've had two groups of eight children um, and I started the year off knowing that I could have eight, but started off each group with six. Mm. And as the year's gone on, they've gone to eight. This year, I'm full already with my two groups of eight for September. Wow. So wow. I know financially that I've got those groups yeah. ready for next year. And I kind of don't need to advertise for those groups. But mm. what I do, I drop on my page some of the things that we've been doing. So then when mm. I start advertising in February, I first put out my post for the following yeah. September they can see what we've been doing and then, you know, yeah. then you get the people through. So it's just a bit about planning really. Yeah. 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 That's really interesting. Yeah. Sure. And that, that whole lead time from February to September yeah. is really important too. I yeah. I think my last place I think was, I filled it two weeks ago. So, and that, that's, that's what we call lead time and making sure we're given enough space for people to find out about us make those decisions that they've got to make because there are other tutors out there. It's just the yeah. right person, all those kind of yeah. things. And it can take that long. I was interviewing someone early on in the week and they were talking to sort of outside of tuition, but they was talking about, they hired a coach, like a business coach and they'd watched this business coach for six months before they purchased. And I think one thing that we do have in for new tutors, we think it's going to happen like the way that you said it. And actually the way it happened to me, very similar. You put a post out and suddenly you've got four people knocking on your door going, yeah, yeah, I want tuition. Yeah, great. Like I think like that's the exception and not the norm. Yeah. Like The norm is usually you've got to put yourself out there. You've got to wait a little bit, keep going, even though you feel like you're talking to nobody, and then allow that process to start because it's not like what they see one post and go, right, definitely, let's buy it. They need to yeah. know about you a little bit more, and you need to yeah. prove that you can do what you're going to say. And so I that's think, really interesting. And I think probably when you're – you know, like you, I my my stuff's bulk face to face, and I'm in the area that I talk to. Mm. So I am well known within in that area, and I think that makes a difference. Online, do I think I would have been able to scale groups as quickly? I don't personally mm. for me. I don't think I probably would have done, would have mm. been able to. And that's what you're saying. You know, it's about building in that lead time, um, and it, it it shows that it does work when yeah. you know if I. I advertise in February, you know, yeah. it's not like I'm thinking about now, September no. now, it's kind of building up because there is, there are loads of other tutors around that are doing the mm. same. I need to know that I've planned and prepared to make sure that I'm okay for September. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's how I've kind of worked it really. 
What was the what I mean? What I mean, intrigued to hear, and I know others will be intrigued to hear, is that whole like when you first started like the tutoring business. Were there people in your life who were like, "Oh my god, why are you doing that? Are you not going to teach anymore?" Were they kind of like almost like the naysayers and the doomsayers? Um, yes and no. I think the key, one of the key questions or things that were said to me is, "Oh, you know, but you know, the things like if you don't work or if you're ill or a child doesn't turn mm. up, you're not going to get paid or." What are you going to do about your pension? Mm. Um, and it was, you know, where, at least when you're at school, even if you're unwell, you're still going to get paid and things like that, which, yes, I get and I understand. But then it's a completely different mindset. You know, I wanted to be at home more than I wanted to be at school. So it's kind of thinking, well, that's where I am at the moment. So, yeah, I think that there definitely were those those questions mm. um but when when i do get something in my head i am a bit like well that's what i'm doing well, that's what yeah. i'm doing anyway and i'm gonna oh, do that's... it and as long as yeah. you know it worked for us as a family for me that was the key thing if it worked for for me with my husband and my children if it worked for us and we could make it work that was the key thing um and kind of trying to switch out you know turn off those other people that perhaps um didn't think not that they didn't think it was going to work but I suppose more worried about the longevity of it because mm. I think tutoring was always very much that people did you know oh can you come and tutor my son and give you a bit of cash in hand yeah do it but it's changed so much you know yeah it is my job mm. is what I do um so that's changed and I think again introducing things like I take payments up front rather than I yeah. When I first started it, they used to turn up six years ago. They used to pay me on the day. Yeah. I learned quite quickly. Oh, they haven't got the money to pay me today, or you know, you know, just those kind of things. Oh, I, can I pay you next week? Or I did. I, I I've got some. I had a funny story about this. Me, me and my my friend's a, a music teacher. He teaches guitar, so very much a case of people would pay cash leaving the house, which is what how it started for me as well, or into my bank, but usually cash. Yeah. And um, we both used to phone each other and, and sort of compare stories. And we're both, we were just so British about it. Like I'd be leaving the house knowing they haven't paid me yeah. going like trying to like make the conversation going a little bit longer. So they'd realize, but not being brave enough to go, you need to pay me now. <laughs> I'd be like, right. So then yeah, I better go. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, I'll see you next week. And yeah. And then, but then, We'd, we'd, we'd laugh about it afterwards because in the literally I'd get a text an hour later from either family. I have two that used to do like this. Go, oh my God, I'm so sorry I didn't pay you. Why didn't you say, you know, they want you to say. Yeah. And it's our own mindset. and thing. Whereas you can take that off the table if you're taking payments up front and you're sending invoices or direct debits. You don't have to worry about it. Once you start getting organized, it actually takes yeah. away all of that pain. Um, yeah. But it's funny that we do do. I don't know. Maybe that's just a me and my friend thing. Like I feel no, quite no. British about it. Yeah, definitely. No, I'm the same. <laughs> I actually made the notes myself uh, to say to talk about that because. Oh really? Yeah. What I would say is, you know, as quickly as possible, get them putting that money in your bank or yeah. paying via a different way than giving you cash because it's awkward. It's like, mm. because we are, like you say, it's very British. Thing. It is. You, yeah, you it's don't weird. Don't want to ask for it, and you think no. you don't walk into McDonald's and buy a you know buy a burger no. and say, oh, i've got my money and i'll come no. back uh, yeah exactly so, yeah i mean when like like you they used to pay me cash but, and then it kind of started a few bank transfers and then i got cheeseburg and that was a big game chain, chain okay for me, really. um it just made everything much more professional uh invoices being sent out that way mm. you know, it had you know, decided I was going to charge a month in advance. And I was really nervous about that to start. Yeah, with. yeah, me too. To pay me mm. for a whole month um, when they've not had the session. But yeah. they do, if yeah. that's what I've said I'm doing, and that's what they did. Yeah, month. I switched to a term in the end. I do yeah. anybody who pays monthly now is direct debit in my business. That's not right. a choice. If they want to pay monthly, they have to do the direct debit. If they want to pay invoice, that's fine, but it's a month. It's sorry, a term. No, six weeks, sorry, because I'm we're Kent. Yeah, yeah, Kent is six weeks term. So it always puts yeah. people off. And also when I put do my when I used to do my something, another lesson you learn along the way, when I was doing my messaging on my landing pages and website, I'd say a term. And so so it's £155 a term. And they, but that's insane value because people are going, that's three months. 
I'm like, no, 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 that's six sessions. I have to like be really clear and have to change it all. And yeah, because Kent do think, I don't know why we do it. We have six terms instead of three, although we still yeah. call it half term when we get to the yeah. half term point. So yeah, so a term is six sessions, usually sometimes seven, but yeah, uh, but they pay for those up front and that's an invoice. And then when you start, because it, that's the other beauty of groups is you you lower the cost, the, the, the values there, but the cost is is better than one-to-one. -one. So when you start looking at what it looks like on an invoice, like one-to-one -one would cost probably close to 250, but adding value maybe a little bit more for the six weeks, whereas yeah. the the groups is 155. So when you start compare, compar comparing and looking at the value within each thing, actually there's way more value in a group in terms of cost yeah. and what they get. So yeah, it is not such a massive fee up front. And let's remember like, some of these people turn up into, you know, they drop their children off in their 80,000 pound car. So, yeah. you know, we, we have to kind of change our mindset around some of this stuff. We're asking for a few hundred quid, yeah. you know, that that's, yeah. that's it. It's not a, it's not a massive, massive investment. Like some of the things payments would actually have to pay out for. Yeah. No, I, you know, I, I met um there's an, a dyslexia uh, specialist teacher local to me and, and we kind of started out um at the same time and we were having a conversation we ran like a workshop together on dyslexia and we were I mean I mean what should we charge mm. you know are parents going to want to come and pay that amount of money for it and then um somebody just turned around and said to us look you're both professionals if you were going to go and run a course you know, an accountant and you're going to run a course for people, they're not going to be saying, oh, you know, is it going to be yeah, so much? Like, true. 20 pounds each, 30 yeah. pounds each. But because we don't come from a business background, come yeah. from school, you, you're all the time thinking, oh no, is that all right? Can I charge that? Yeah. Actually, yes, it is okay. Yeah. You know, at school when we're thinking, oh, this trip's going to cost, you know, 20 pounds, mm. the parents going to be able to afford that. Well, when you're in running, running your own business, you can't think like that. You've got no. to think this is the value that they're getting from the got, two professionals that are running exactly the yeah you've got to be charged you've got to charge what you're worth 100 yeah. percent, haven't you you've got to do that you've got to do that and there are ways of i think one of the things a lot of people wrestle with is this whole not reaching the children that really need it and that's that's okay to have that as a thought but then you have to go well if you are if you are that way inclined and you feel really strongly about it there are two options and they are clear ones because something sometimes people feel like i'm being a bit pedantic when i say this i'm not i really truly mean it you can do a CIC company, which is yeah. basically a non-profit and you can set it up and you just, all you really need is a board of people, maybe two or three of you who kind of make decisions based on the company, making sure you're doing it in, in, in an ethical way and you keep min minutes, but you yeah. go out and you set up as a non, uh, a not-for-profit, but you can make a profit by the way in that business and you can pay yourself a salary, all of those things that you would need, but you can then apply for funding as a CIC company. And then you can go out and reach the kind of vulnerable people that you are thinking about but as well as set up some private work and and, and what have you or oh, secondly set up a charity it's a lot of hard work in the in the in the in, in the front end of what you're trying to do but essentially means you can apply for bids and funding again and go out and get corporate sponsors and yeah. you know those kind of things so there are ways of doing it if you feel really passionate about it there are there are there are ways and a secondary to that if you build your business to a certain level you're going to be able to make those choices and ma and create courses for those families to to access so there's always a way around that problem you've just got to think about what how what's the best way towards it um, and when you get to the point where there's like money in the business or there's like regular recurring income coming in every month every term you can go actually I can invest some of this in other ways and you can start doing that philanthropy part of yes. what's really driving you so yeah you're right and we do have these mindset blocks and money blocks and it's important that we work through them really important yeah, that we work through them do, we don't do though you know when you go into to school to be a teacher you have no background of running a business whatsoever you're told what you need to teach where you need to teach when you what you know at what time you're well, what time you're going to do it, i think even like no. it's polar opposite to the point where we actually put our hand in our own pockets to make sure that these children have the experiences that they need. You know, how many, I I, I mean, I was chatting just as off the, off the record stuff at the, uh, at the school that I was in, some teacher was talking about how much money they'd spent. So was talking about the strikes and stuff. Yeah. And like, there was one teacher said, I've probably spent, well, we got everything out. We worked it all out, spent 400 pound this year. This was about a month ago, 400 pound of our own money on resources for her yeah. class, just her one class. And that's probably extreme. 
but there will be teachers spending on average between 50 to 100 pound a year on just yeah, things their class need i mean most people just go oh my god yeah and the rest you know that yeah. that's probably realistic and so we're actually like adding value into children's lives like the opposite of business and not taking any, anything back yeah. whereas in our business we're able to go i can invest this money in these children's lives yeah. and what happens is i'm able to get more business from it and it improves the value which yeah. therefore you can then start to look at right does this provide so much value i can increase the cost by 10 pound a month or 10 pound a term you know, those kind of things. Mm. And it kind of just all feeds into the whole system. And that's becoming a business minded person. Yeah. And it takes time to get, it does take time mm. to, to get there, doesn't it? But, uh, what do you think helped you though, get to that point, Sarah? Because lots of us, I would say it was more natural for me. I did a business degree. So it was always something in my head, like yeah. our business would be quite good. Now that's not, I don't I realize that's, I wouldn't say it's com completely unique because there's lots of teachers on business degrees, but what do you think helped you make that switch? Um, as in like the mindset. From yeah. To run a business. I think yeah. a lot of it again was when I, it was really when I went from doing one-to-ones to wanting to scale up to be able to earn some more money. And I had to think about what I needed to spend each you know what i needed to spend mm. on resources you know buying things like tutor bird um my, having you know the the correct insurance to have people in my home you know all of those things that when i started to think actually i ne really need to know what i'm spending and what i'm getting in each month to be able to scale the business properly and i think mm. from that from moving to groups i think for me that made me think that i'd gone from being just a tutor to I'm running a business okay and it was a and it did really have a, a change of mindset and at mm. the time that I had decided to run groups was when I started to have some other tutors working for me oh, I want to dig into this yeah great yeah so I because I was getting so many inquiries I thought right I probably could make a bit of money from this if I had some tutors working for me um and I knew somebody who was doing a little bit of tutoring or had done historically, wasn't the same situation to me, had similar age children, hadn't gone back to school. And so I approached her initially and said, would you be interested? Um, and this actually it flashed up on my phone three years today was when I took on my first tutor who was going to work under my name. Um, and again, so it was that point of transitioning from just doing one-to-ones to groups so then, right, I'm going to have somebody working for me. And and it was those two things, really, the groups and having somebody come to work under my name that it, it's now can't be just Sarah is doing some tutoring. Mm -hmm. It's like read to grow tuition is a business. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, so I had uh, Amy. She was lovely. She came on board. She got her hours filled up really quickly. Obviously, we were at kind of covid -y time. Um and so she did all of her, she staffed as an online tutor for me. And straight away, I got her doing some groups. So she wasn't picking up any one-to-one. -one. She was doing like a, a year three and four maths course over the summer because they'd been off school for so long. So mm. kind of targeted onto there. Then I had people contacting me um, about secondary maths and English. I thought, well, you know, I could probably have a go at doing key stage three. But straight away, I said, that's not my niche. You know, I could. it would take me a long time to plan it. Mm. be able to deliver it because it's not really my my thing so i put out some uh, adverts to say i was looking for people to to supply some maths and english tuition and i had a number of people contact me and i did um, a bit of an interview with them online got some references checked their enhanced dbs and again it was all those things i was thinking this isn't just me having somebody working under my name this is mm. going to be something that's going to take a lot of time um and there were some that I just thought you don't have the same. Um, I wanted people who were going to work under my name, who would have the same morals is probably the wrong word, but would be no, delivering in a similar so, kind of way. To yeah. Them. Some of it's like values and beliefs, isn't it? As yeah. well as delivery. Often it's like, you're going to buy into the ethos of what we're trying to That's achieve. Word, yeah. I yeah. And I, there were some that I just thought, Oh no, I don't think you're really for me. Mm. Nice enough people, but yeah. very different kind of, um, take from things and I thought well if they're working under my name they've got to have the same ethos and kind of, same kind of work ethic um, that I know because I'm not going to be you know it's not school I'm not going to be observing these people I've got to trust if they're mm. doing it online that they're providing 
what I would provide. Um, and so, again, that's quite a difficult um, thing to to kind of get your head around as well. Mm. That in school, you can go and you can drop in and you see how even, you're not doing an official observation, but you drop in and you see how somebody's getting on. You think, oh, God, that's fine, you know, everything's going okay there. But again, it's not quite the same when you're getting somebody to work under your name and you've interviewed them and it's fine and you're, their references. For me, the references were a big thing. Because you can, I can chat to you now, but I don't know mm. whether you're a good teacher or not. So the references mm. for me were um, were really important. Um, and so it was interesting, though, because the ones that I thought, mm, no, I'm not really sure, they didn't – I think we felt the same because none of them then came back to me to say, oh, you know, but I'd really like to, to do something. Yeah, like sure. It. I think we both felt the same. Yeah. Um, so – you know, we, I did have, oh, there were 10 of us at one point. I had Wow, people. that's so crazy, isn't it? Like, um, that's... Yeah. And I think I became a bit overwhelmed, if I'm honest, because I had two, I had two young children mm -hmm. running my own business, doing my own tutoring, and then scaling the business. Having these 10 tutors meant that I had a lot more admin it meant mm. that I was then putting ad more kind of adverts out on Facebook, not necessarily adverts to say come and buy, but this is a this is Maria and she's teaching GCSE English and this is what a child has said about her and this is you know Ed and he's doing um, A level maths and and so it was all of those things that mm. I was trying to juggle and have two young children that one would, had just started year R and I was trying to do, you know, he wasn't at school because he was at home because of COVID and I felt like I wow. wasn't from him. And, you know, it was all of those kind of things. Yeah. And I muddled, and I say muddled, I had, um, agree, uh, you know, like gr agreements with the tutors. I'd got all of that sorted out. But I just felt, for me, it um, perhaps like it was the wrong time. I feel like it was the wrong time for me. I probably wasn't as ready as what I should have been so, to be able to take people on and then everything came out from the national tutors association about employment agency and employment business and it just completely threw me mm. and i read into it and i shared it with my accountant and i just didn't really know what to do properly and mm. so i just made a decision that i would go back to just being me on my own that's really it's um, bit really interesting because i'm at that crossroad now of employing other tutors and had to go through this whole agency business type thing. And it's really is a bit of a minefield and actually it's very vague, but I feel like it's vague on purpose so that, yeah. that because nobody really knows what it all means. So when you start looking at the difference between the agency and the business, it's very confusing. And, uh, but some parts are quite clear, but then other parts you go, Oh, that's quite, I don't know whether it contradicts itself might be a bit harsh, but yeah, it's very, very strange. Um, it just when like I first boozled me, like all the information just like just completely overwhelmed me. And then I was very much like, I can't cope with this at the moment. And so I made that decision. If I would have heard what Sharon had said about service level agreements and things like that, at say this time last yeah. this time last year, perhaps I would be in a different yeah. situation because it was last summer that I stopped everybody. That's when we all stopped. Well, I was gonna say there, Sarah, about three I one of the first courses I did was amazing didn't go down to this route but then what that led to was me to the next thing that I did basically that course then introduced me to the person who was going to do I did like a year-long coaching program and in there one thing that really struck me was one of the first sessions I went to there was like just different businesses it wasn't tuition there was those loads those loads so there was but, but the one in particular that stands out and I talk about this guy well there's two two guys actually they um they run a e-commerce website they sell handbags and they were making a few hundred thousand pound a month so really high level yeah. and I'm there like barely making a thousand pound a month thinking what am I doing here you know massive imposter syndrome but it was really fascinating to be in a room with that kind of level and, and the guy that was running that particular session he was talking about building a business and he was saying about the things that you had just been talking about. You know, you have to go through all of these things and you, you feel like you're on your own at first. And then you get these other people coming in and you've got these new jobs you've got to do because you need to make sure you're securing work and whatever it may, may look like. Sometimes it's creating an induction program or a manual or whatever it may, whatever it may be, but as well alongside all that, all the contractual stuff. 
But he was saying what happens and what he worries about the most. This is a guy who runs a multi um, seven figure business himself. He was saying that when he supports businesses, one of the things that he looks out for before saying yes to someone on his course, he looks at how fast they've grown. Yeah. He said, because businesses that grow fast usually fall the quickest. Mm -hmm. And he says, it's like looking at building a house. Like what happens is you go, well, I'm going to go to this stage. And then often we go to the next stage a bit too fast, but the next stage will still be okay. Cause even though it's a little bit wobbly, it will still hold. And then you go to the next stage and it, it's, it will still hold cause it's still quite low, but it's, it's the foundations aren't in place. And he says, sometimes it's best to slow down a tiny bit. It doesn't mean that you can, be really patient and you shouldn't move he said but make sure you've got the right people like giving you the right advice like you say like if you had you'd heard Sharon say that a year ago your next level is way more secure yeah. or had the accountant known or HR had a HR meeting with somebody and yeah. they could have advised you or yeah. whatever that you what you're doing just making sure the next level is really secure and yeah. you can move on and I know this is such wise advice that You've got to go and find your network of people. Like... 100%. I really <laughs> just think that was really cheesy. I used to think, oh, yeah, yeah, what me are too. they talking about? Go and find your network of people. Yeah. But it is so... It is true. So true. Yeah. You know, and um, and that is networking in, in different ways as well, isn't it? Like what I'm trying to do and you came along and some of the other tutors, like finding that tutor network where we've all come away from that having benefited from something yeah. you know even if it's just one little nugget that you come away with yeah, you think, oh actually that's beneficial and then having you know your accountant or somebody you can go to for hr or somebody that can do some like admin bits for you mm. that you feel oh i can just breathe because actually yeah. i know that's kind of that's done and but again i you know i'm not afraid to say that i kind of built up and then i've scaled right back because actually it wasn't it wasn't really the right time for me to do that and it made me really think what do I want what do I want to do yeah in this tuition business and was it to have lots of people working for me perhaps that will be later on but at this point there's still yeah. too many things I want to do but myself also like you're you're starting from scratch you know how to do it like that yeah. this is the thing like you you do these things and you move forward and it wasn't the right time like that sounds like a crazy time by the way two young children covid year are at home wow that anything was able to to function on any level i was like, I was like people were contacting all the time i don't know about you like oh can you fit oh it was a, in? yeah it was a crazy time yeah and i was putting my little one you know down for a nap my husband was working for home he had to go downstairs and then try and do something with harry Mm. and keep him in saying oh, i'd come upstairs and i would do an online lesson yeah we literally like this the whole yeah. time and it was just yeah but yeah we all live and so, learn, don't we? i think if you've managed to do it during covid time i think you can do it when we're back almost back to normal <laughs> so i think definitely all confidence in your in your direction with that um and i think that's an amazing story in itself just without anything anything else and i think that this little segment of talking about that growth is really beneficial for people to hear because there'll be lots of tutors who are in the same same sort of space where they've got maybe a waiting list or you know people are phoning them a couple of times a week and they just can't say yes. And actually, the way forward could be to get another tutor on board. It might be the right yeah. time. How that works, what I would say is you need to go and speak to a HR person. I've spoken to HR depth. There's a place, I will live in Kent, so this is going to be easy for us. It's in Maidstone. There's, there's places all up and down the country, so find a local one to you. There are other options out there. I was also advised to speak to some local HR departments as well just like little, little yeah. like offices and things because they can also give similar support and if they're local to you can go and see them which is quite nice as well yeah. um but essentially you're looking for a bit of one-off advice and hr debt they gave me about an hour of their time completely for free talking about all the things we've just spoken about i want to look at what contracts are available what rights do i have as the employer versus what rights can they have as an employee what could i do in terms of 
I'm looking at service level agreements or consultancy agreements. Am I doing a worker contract? There was things which mo most of you will go, what are you even talking about right now? That's how I felt a few weeks ago. Yeah. So go and speak to these people because they will enlighten you. And also you'll feel better about it. So mm -hmm. if you are at that crossroads where you're going, actually, I think having a tutor might be a good idea, but I'm scared of this employment agency and employment business. Go and speak to your HR department. Go and speak to your HR department. Go and speak to a yeah. HR depth and just pick up the phone because they will be really helpful to you okay they will be really helpful to you so yeah, i've got one more question advice. for you sarah one more question yeah. and then i'm gonna uh, leave it up to you about how we end yeah you're looking ahead from where you are now this is that really horrible interview question so i apologize up front mm -hmm. where do you see yourself in a year like to five years what's on your do you think's on your um business journey next what what are the next big milestones uh well it's quite a a bit of a transitional time for me so I'm currently still a Senko uh, in a school so yeah. I leave there at the end of this month mm -hmm. I've got six more days left in my Senko role <laughs> if only it was only six more days of work that's what uh, yeah, I know that's right that's yeah um and then in September so I work um I'd like to carry on as long as possible doing the national tutoring program stuff so I've been doing that this year they they want me back next year for a, a couple of afternoons a week so so that's good and hopefully that will uh, continue as long as possible yeah and then i you know i've always had a passion for supporting children with um sen and so from september i go and do starting my level seven dyslexia specialist and assessor course mm. in canterbury so you know in a year's time i'll have that um under my belt and then that's when I really want to, you know, I'll still do the 11 plus stuff. Um, but that's where I think the business will slightly change because the aim will be that I will be able to offer more kind of packages to schools. Mm. Um, and also I'd love to be able to run some really small bespoke groups for children with dyslexia. Well, yeah, yeah, wow. Well. Sensory learning and things like that so that's where i'd like to go that's the kind mm. of plan okay but i need, need to do the course first and pass yeah yeah course. yeah well i'm sure you will um, yeah i'm sure you'll get through that no problem yeah yeah and I, you know eventually maybe i will go down the whole tutor having tutors work for me again but not at this moment i think yeah I've got, there's a lot of self-development that i still kind of want to do first i think yeah on that route and then um yeah interesting times well we i know we'll definitely stay in touch because i'm we'll definitely i don't know if i have booked in but i definitely will book into the next yeah, networking just, event yeah i mean anybody that's local can yeah so if you're in kent i mean i say kent i mean we, we go and it's quite easy to get to because it's, it's along the m2 a2 yeah. Yeah, it's the M uh, M2. Two. Yeah. Yeah. On yeah. the basically the main road in and out of Kent that takes you all the way to Margate pretty much. So wherever it's quite an easy, quite an easy drive. I mean, I, I'm about 20 minutes away from it and I'm in Canterbury. So if you're Medway tutor and you're listening to this, like definitely, because it is just down the road from you. But I'd even say as far up as like um the other side okay. of Maidstone, Alsham. Yeah. At, or Alsham, Alsford, I mean, like those kind of places, they're quite easy to get to. So if you're in and around that area and you and you're feeling a bit like, you know, it's quite, I'm on my own a little bit and you want to uh, link up with some other tutors just for some ideas or just a space to go and vent, it, it's, it's yeah. a perfect space, isn't it? It's amazing. Yeah, it is. And every, like, you know, every, all of us had similar kind of questions or, you know, collecting money from people, chasing people that haven't paid, yeah. you know, looking at yeah. test papers, all yeah. of that kind of thing. Everybody's got the same kind mm. of things going on, but maybe in a slightly, uh, slightly different way. And someone even, I can't remember her name. I've got her in my, in my phone. I need to text her again, actually, because she said, I'll come up and see the centre. And I'd love to do that. It's just oh, finding Steph. the right time. Steph. Yeah. Yeah, she was like, I'll come up and see the centre and I really want to. Like, that's the kind of stuff I'd really love to be able to start doing again, which yeah. is why I kind of look at my timetable from September and go, actually, it's a little bit freer. I want to create time and moments where that kind of stuff can can happen. Yeah. And that's uh, definitely what I've got to say. You know, in um, stepping away from school, I would say this year I haven't worked on the business as much. It's very much been, it's yeah. been a bit like this the whole year. <laughs> Whereas now from September, I have more time to actually spend time in yeah. my business where I've not really done that. I've just kept it going. Um, 
Yeah. Amazing. Sarah, thank you so much for your time. I always end with this question because sometimes I haven't asked everything that I should have asked because, you know, the conversation takes us down different tangents. Is there something that you'd prepared or something you'd like to share that you haven't or haven't given you the opportunity to? I don't think so. Okay. I, you know, no, I just think, oh, one of the things you did say was about if, um, if somebody's aspiring, you know, to be a tutor, just give it a go. You know, give it a go. Mm. That's all I would say because it can sound this sounds really cheesy as well but come on get the cheese really out quite, it can really change your kind of lifestyle mm. um because you're coming away from that i'm not saying that everybody should leave teaching otherwise we wouldn't be in teacher chef, but if it's something you're thinking about doing just give it a go but mm. think about what your niche is don't spread yourself too thin thinly okay you can't do everything so mm. I, I i think if you can choose an area or two that you can really focus in on i think that's mm make it easier for you to sell what you're doing and that is a bit of solid advice to end on there sarah thank you so much for your time i really appreciate it no it's been amazing thank you very much for your share for for everything that you shared even like the the stuff we spoke about before we started recording was really interesting to me and we covered most of that in what we was talking about uh uh, live as well um if somebody wants to check uh you out on social media where's the best place we've got Uh, some pages yeah, Facebook, Read to Grow Tuition. I'm the same on Instagram, but okay. definitely more active. Uh, Facebook's my thing, really. Yeah, me too. So Facebook's the best place to uh, find you. That Read to Grow. Yeah, Read to Grow Tuition. Yeah. Read to Grow Tuition. Okay, excellent. This is good because what happens is when you start following other pages like Read to Grow Tuition or Mime's Mr. C's Tutoring, you get to see, like I often say, you get to see the imperfections of the business. Like you get to see that, oh my God, this person doesn't post every day or this person doesn't do that. And you'll see that the business still thrives and does really well. And and you'll get told by perhaps other gurus that you have to be on Facebook like 24 seven to actually make it grow a business. You don't, there are just ways to do it. So go and follow Sarah on her Facebook page because you'll learn a lot from how she does her business and also just keep up to date with what she's doing, which should be really interesting anyway. Sarah, thank you so much for your time. Can't wait to be seeing you in a few months. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.